I first came here in 1982 with a, with my family, and I remember getting out of the car and seeing Old Faithful and saying, I'm definitely coming back here someday. Now I do a lot of data analysis and software design for the Park Service and the USGS. One big project is making climate data more accessible because um, we're finally now to the point where we can start to make more confident statements about long-term patterns in time and in space about climate. We know for sure that it's going to get warmer. For example, if you look at the northeast entrance to Yellowstone, there are roughly 80 to 100 days more per year above freezing than there were in the mid-60s. So as a result, not only is the, the peak snow or the deepest snow recorded out there uh, much lower than it ever was, there's fewer days per year with snow. This is bigger than anything we've ever faced. Our function as a place where snow and water is stored and then released into the streams, um, that's going to change going into the future. It's going to be released earlier, there'll be less of it. And the timing of that, um, when the snow disappears, when green up starts, triggers all kinds of things in ungulates and the predators that follow the ungulates. and plants growing, pollination, all kinds of phenological processes. And, uh, and, and anything that changes that timing has a cascading effect you know, through the whole ecosystem. The part that, that we're really paying attention to is how fast that change is going to happen. Since the end of the last ice age, temperatures increased by 5 to 14 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on the location. Uh, but that took 5,000 years. In contrast, we predict about the same amount of warming to happen in 100 years. And so what you'll see is things will die off, other things will come in, and you'll start to have combinations of um, vegetation that don't exist on the ground right now. Or you'll get a disturbance that'll come through, a fire, and what comes back will be different than what was there because the conditions for seedlings to grow will be different than they were back when these trees were established. In the past, they estimate a fire on the scale of 1988 it happened every 100 to 300 years. According to the models, by the year 2100, if there's no carbon emissions, the climate would be suitable for a fire of that scale every three to five years. It's going to be limited by how much forest there actually is left to burn. We're talking about a park that's covered in forests right now, all around us, that might look profoundly different, might be more of a sagebrushy area by the end of the century. Things people really can't even imagine. It's, I can't even imagine it. I'm just saying it because it's what the projections show, but I truly can't imagine it. The potential is out there to affect everything you see when you come to Yellowstone. seeing in Yellowstone mirrors what is seen throughout the entire greater Yellowstone ecosystem in the northern Rockies and many areas of North America. And we have to recognize that we're in a very different place than we were a decade ago. With a changing climate, we are faced with uh, an incredibly uh, difficult way of looking at the future of park management. For example, it's hard to know whether or not some of the things that we're doing with exotic plant management, with fish management and restoration, or in, in some of our work with our partners outside the park to secure migration corridors for wildlife, uh, whether or not we're focusing on the right things, if it turns out that that species will no longer be able to persist given the basic physical conditions in those systems. When it comes to reduced snowpack, there are a lot of potential impacts. The Continental Divide goes right down through Yellowstone, so miles and miles downstream 
people count on the water that's melting out of the Greater Yellowstone area. Talking about whether we have dug fir or lodgepole is kind of an academic exercise. You know, talking about whether there's enough water for people downstream and what that means to how society is going to handle potential drought. That's, that's a whole different thing, way beyond the borders of Yellowstone. And the more that this kind of thinking can get incorporated into decision making, so people are making decisions, thinking about likely futures, I think that's really important. We're kind of at a turning point in history, so I think every person alive right now has the opportunity to make a big difference to what the future is like.